that's how we do function uh, the function from example one. Let's look at another example. We want to find where the function is increasing and decreasing on the given interval once again. This time, my function is cosine of x. And my interval is from negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi. The first step is to find where the critical values are. In this case, my g prime would be negative sine of x. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. Negative sine can never not exist. Sine of x exists for any x we plug in. So the only place we're going to have a critical value is when negative sine of x is zero. If I divide that equation by negative one, this means the critical values happen when sine of x is zero. Now, sine of x is zero when x is some integer times pi. Okay, k here is an integer. Because we're in between negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi, that means x could be equal to negative 2 pi. x could be negative 1 pi. x could be 0 pi. x could be positive 1 pi. Or x could be 2 pi. This shows us where the divisions on the subintervals are going to be. So the subintervals, it starts at the left hand point of the main interval, which just happens to be a critical value. So it starts at negative 2 pi, and it goes all the way up to the next critical point, which is negative 1 pi. Then my next subinterval is going to go from negative 1 pi up to 0. My next subinterval is going to go from 0 to positive 1 pi. And then my next subinterval goes from 1 pi up to 2 pi. Let's examine each of these subintervals separately. The first subinterval, negative 2 pi pi to negative 1 pi. We want to plug in a number between negative 2 pi and negative 1 pi. Negative 2 pi is about negative 6.28. Negative 1 pi is about negative 3.14. So anything between negative 6.28 and negative 3.14 will work. If you wanted to, you can also do something like negative 1.5 pi, because negative 1.5 is in between negative 1 and negative 2. So that's what I'll do. Negative 1.5 pi, let's plug that into here. Remember that this is negative sine of x. So negative sine of negative 1.5 pi. Just type that into the calculator. I ended up with a negative 1. Now, the important part is that we got a negative out. So I know my function g of x, or in other words, cosine of x, is decreasing on the interval from negative 2 pi to negative 1 pi. Let's look at the next interval. 
negative one pi to zero. We're gonna plug in some number in between negative one pi and zero. This time, I'm not gonna go halfway. I'm not gonna do a negative 0.5. Rather, I'm just gonna realize that zero down to negative one pi is about negative 3.14. So if I just did a negative two, I could plug that in, negative sine of negative two. Type that into my calculator. I got a positive 9.09. .09. Oh, did I say nine? I'm sorry, 0 0.909. And the only thing I care about is the fact that that's positive. So my function, g of x, which is cosine, is increasing on that interval, the interval from negative one pi to zero. I can do this for these other intervals as well. Let's go ahead and do that for the interval from zero to one pi. Zero to one pi. Again, you can plug in any number between zero and about 3.14. What if I just plugged in a one? That's between zero and about 3.14. Negative sine of one. I type that into my calculator and I get a negative 0.8415. Again, the interesting part about that is that it's negative, which means that g of x is decreasing on the interval from zero to one pi. Lastly, the last subinterval is from one pi to two pi. I might run out of room here, that's okay. One pi is about 3.14, two pi is about 6.28. So if I plug in, for instance, a five, that's between one pi and two pi. Let's go ahead and do that. Negative sine of five, I got about 0.9589. Again, the important part is that it's positive. And that means my original function between one pi and two pi is increasing. So in that interval, obviously, is what I'm meaning. So we see that we know exactly where my function g is decreasing and where it's increasing. I want to state a little bit of a warning. Be careful to not assume that we always go from decreasing to increasing, from de then back to decreasing. There are occasions when you have a critical value and you'll have increasing and then increasing again. So we'll have increasing two times in a row. That did not happen in my two examples. We went back and forth in these two examples, but it would happen in other circumstances. So just be careful that um, you don't automatically assume it always jumps back and forth between increasing and decreasing. Sometimes you'll get two increasing sections in a row. Sometimes you could get two decreasing sections in a row. I would like you to do this. Find where this function is increasing and where this function is decreasing on the interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. Infinity. Go ahead, push pause, do that, and I will explain how to do this in the next video.